What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect here. In this video, I'm going to be doing a scene and compositing breakdown of the second butterfly shot that we've used in our Spiderfy add-on for Blender trailer. As usual, this shot breakdown is not really a tutorial, but more of a conceptual overview to show some of the concepts behind creating these shots. And if you saw our Crows compositing video as well that I released last week, a lot of the concepts in this video are very similar. However, there are a few techniques in the compositing process that are a little bit more specific to this shot. Anyways guys, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender. This is our general scene setup here. The first thing I did when I was creating this shot was of course import and track our footage. So if I go to the motion tracking tab here, you can see that I've just generally tracked our scene and then imported that tracking data onto a camera in our 3D world. And as I mentioned in my last video, I do have a tutorial on how you can 3D track your live action shots in Blender. So I'll put a link to that video in the description because once you know how to 3D track some live action shots, CG can be really fun to integrate into live action. But uh, anyways, I've 3D tracked our shot here, imported that tracking data onto a camera. Pretty good solve error here of 0.59 pixels. And once I've 3D tracked the footage, I've added two butterfly particle systems through Spiderfy. And uh, as you can see here, I have one butterfly particle system here in the foreground by the camera. And then I have one in the background closer to where the creek would be in our live action shot here. And as you can see here, I've just placed the goal for the butterfly particle systems off to the left of camera here so that the butterflies would fly across the camera here. And uh, I've also scaled our particle emitters to make a fairly large distribution of butterflies. And then under our particle settings, I've increased the number of the foreground butterfly system to 1600. And then for our background system, I brought it down to 700 since I've scaled that particle emitter to be a little bit smaller. So I didn't need quite as many butterflies. But this is the general concept here. I I've animated the goal objects for the butterflies just slightly to give a little bit of variation in their movement through the scene. And uh, as you can see here in the right side, this is kind of our preview layout here. I made sure that the scale of our butterflies in the background are generally what I want them to be for our final composite. And then for our foreground butterfly system, I made sure it was close enough to be a decent mid-ground element, but also enough detail so that we could scale it up and blur it for an element that was going right by the camera. So uh, I'll show you that in the compositing process inside of After Effects. As far as lighting the scene goes, what I've done here is I've used a basic HDRI that is similar to our live action shot here, and then I've added a sun to side light our butterflies from the left of camera. And as you can see here from our live action shot, you can see that the sun is coming off from the left of camera. So we're trying to match our CG lighting to our live action shot. So that's why I've added the sun here, pretty low on the horizon, just kind of side lighting our butterflies. And if I go to rendered view really quick, you can see that we're getting a nice edge on our butterflies from our sun lamp that matches pretty closely our trees in the background. And uh, that's going to help us integrate these butterflies into our live action shot a lot better once we render these two elements and uh, get them in our compositor. So uh, that's the general scene setup here. I've also added a ground plane, which I uh, made the base color similar to the trees in the background here so that we don't have any light coming from below our butterflies other than that which is reflecting off of the ground plane here and then I've turned this ground plane into a shadow catcher so that we wouldn't actually see this ground plane in our actual render and uh, we can composite those butterflies more effectively. Anyways I've rendered both of our butterfly bug systems out separately. I've used about 50 samples but probably could have gotten away with less. Checked the motion blur checkbox but brought the shutter down quite a bit so very subtle motion blur on these element renders and as usual I've uh, rendered out at 1920 by 1080p resolution and uh, output with the the OpenEXR file format as a good visual effects format. But uh, anyways, once I've rendered out these two different butterfly elements inside of After Effects, I'll just go through the compositing layers one by one here. This is our final composite without color correction. As you can see here, I've added one more color correction layer to kind of increase the contrast, give it a little bit of a film look. But uh, I'll go ahead and start from the bottom here. The first thing that I added to our scene were these two background butterfly elements. So as you can see here, if I enable our background Two. This is just our first background element that I've just moved over to fill in this space on the top right of our frame. And I've just masked out the portion of this element that uh, would be covered by the trees here in the right of frame. So uh, obviously, since I want these butterflies to be closer to the river, I don't want them to overlap with the trees here. So I've just used a very basic subtract mask here so that they aren't overlapping. 
After adding that first background element, I've uh, added another one of our background elements for our main background pass. And as you can see here, I've used two different masks to again isolate the butterflies to the center of our scene here by the river. And instead of using a normal mask for our second mask here by the trees, I've actually used a darkened mask, which instead of hiding the butterflies themselves, is actually going to darken them as they go into the forest. And I just feathered that mask so that it uh, integrates them into the scene a bit more. So as you can see here, if I just turn it off that's uh, before the mask and then if I go to darken you can see that the butterflies where our mask are kind of fading off into the background and this isn't always the best way to do things however they're far enough in the distance where you don't really notice that they're just kind of fading off into the darkness with this mask here and I just feathered it enough to hide the seam of that mask and for both of these background butterfly layers I've added a few different effects uh, I'll go ahead and isolate them really quick I've added some human saturation to uh, bring down the mask saturation of the butterflies a little bit to match our scene a bit better then I've added a curve setting which just uh, brightened up our butterflies a bit I don't know if you can really notice them here it's pretty subtle you can't really notice it very much um, then I've added some directional blur and I've just uh, made the angle of the blur match the direction that the butterflies are flying as you can see here I've just matched the angle here and then I've increased the blur length of our directional blur to 0.5 and uh, as you can see here if I uh, turn it off and then on you can see that it's just blurring it a tiny bit to help integrate it into the live action shot a bit better and uh, then finally I've added a camera lens blur to try and match the sharpness of our background our video is pretty sharp but it does have a little bit of blur to it so I wanted to make sure that the butterflies are blurred as well to match them into the live action shot and also since the butterflies are moving uh, we do want them to have a little bit of blur to them as well which is why we added that directional blur and after adding our background butterflies through these elements I've added our second render of our mid-ground butterflies that we've exported from Blender and as you can see here It's uh, just that render closer to the camera and I've added a few effects to this render layer as well I'll go ahead and disable them and go through them one by one This is our raw CG element from Blender as you can see the lighting is looking pretty good But it can definitely be blended into the shot a bit better So I've added some uh, hue and saturation to bring down the master saturation and match it to the live action shot a bit first Then I've added a curves setting to brighten it up a little bit since uh, I thought our sun for our live action shot was just a little bit brighter than uh, our butterflies were here. So I've just increased the brightness of our mid-ground butterflies a bit with this effect. And uh, then I've added a uh, very basic glow to our butterflies. And uh, one of the things about you know certain creatures is that they have a kind of a translucent uh, factor to them and they kind of you know almost light up when light passes through them. Organic objects kind of like uh, you know skin or you know these butterflies here obviously they're so thin that you know light actually passes through them and they sort of glow so uh, one of the ways we do that in 3d is by using subsurface scattering but uh, once we create that material you know we have to composite the element into the live-action shot so I just added a glow which helps enhance that effect and bring them to life a bit more so I've added a very basic glow to this mid-ground butterfly element then I've added some directional blur to this one as well with that same angle very subtle with a blur line of 0.5 pixels and then finally I've added some camera lens blur to match the sharpness of the live action shot finally what I've done here is I've duplicated our mid-ground butterflies and scaled it up to be closer to the camera on this last layer here and obviously when you uh, scale something up you're going to lose pixel data but the reason I can get away with that is because they're so close to the camera that the element would actually be blurred so uh, I've just used a few different effects here to blend it into the shot this is our our raw render pass and we're losing a little bit of pixel data but that's not a problem because once we add these effects it'll blend pretty well so uh, I've added a basic hue and saturation effect here brought down the saturation to match the saturation of our live action shot then uh, as I did for our other mid-ground element I've increased the curves level to brighten them up a bit and match their levels to the live action shot then I've again added some glow to this butterfly again creating that translucent feel and integrating them into the shot a bit better and uh, you can play with the threshold glow radius and glow intensity to kind of uh, you know tweak how much you want 
uh, your butterfly or whatever element you're adding to glow. And uh, then I've added some directional blur as I did before, which already makes it match much better. And finally, I've added some camera lens blur where I increased the blur radius quite a bit more than the other two elements in the shot because they were close to the camera and would likely be out of focus for the camera. Finally, as I mentioned, I've just added an adjustment layer with a Lumetri color preset and uh, got this final result. Anyways, guys, that is how I composited these butterflies and how I created this shot for our Spotify add-on for Blender trailer. If you have any questions or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know if you want me to keep making these breakdowns or if you feel they're kind of redundant, feel free to leave that comment down below as well. Regardless, we have lots of tutorials coming in the works here, so stay tuned for those, and I'll see you next time.